In this video, I'm going to talk about how to learn without going to school. As we all know, college and higher education can be quite pricey, and of course there's tons of affordable options, but if that's just not your jam and you'd rather just absorb information on your own time, here are a couple of great ways that you can keep expanding your realm of knowledge without having to pay a penny. Okay, I guess some of these require money of some sort, but like, it's probably a hell of a lot cheaper than school, right? First thing is to take online classes. Now there are a lot of free options for this and of course paid options as well. What I've been using a lot recently is Masterclass because they ran a crazy deal where students get one year of Masterclass for $1 crazy. I'm personally in the creative field. They have a ton of artistic people, so like filmmakers, musicians, they have a bunch of food stuff too. And usually it's really expensive to get a masterclass subscription, but maybe they'll have a crazy good deal sometime soon. I don't know. Linda is another great one, or I think it's also called LinkedIn Learning. There is a cost associated with it, but I actually got a free subscription through my local library. There's like a specific link you can get off of my local library's website, and then you just put in your library card number and then you can create an account for free, which I think is super cool because it makes learning very accessible to literally anyone because anyone can get a library card. But I also have a Linda subscription available through my school. Some really great free options are edX and also Coursera. And I know that a lot of like really big prestigious universities even have free classes on those kinds of websites like Harvard and Yale and there's just such a wide range of different topics. I think there are different tiers where you have to pay for the upper tiers but like the knowledge itself and the classes and lectures themselves are usually free. Two is to talk to experts. I think one of the best ways to learn about a particular job or subject is just to talk to somebody who's really immersed in it and very knowledgeable about it. So this could be a scientist at your local university or even just somebody in your family. If your grandfather fought in the war and you wanna learn more about that, ask him what it was like. You can talk to your friend who has an Etsy business and talk to them about running their own side hustle. The key with this is to just not be afraid to reach out to people. You'd be surprised what happens if you just ask them. Even if it's someone that's far away from you, like you don't have to meet for coffee, you can literally just arrange a phone call or a Zoom call and just ask for 10 minutes of their time. That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna talk for 10 minutes. You can have a lot of questions prepared and hopefully they just keep talking and don't even remember what time it is and then you realize like two hours have passed by. What I'm trying to say is if there's someone that you really wanna pick their brain, really wanna know what their opinion on this certain topic is, email them, tweet them, Instagram DM them. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there because the worst they can say is no or just ignore you. Three is to consume educational media. And this one is probably the most obvious. Look at books, look at blogs, look at podcasts, go on YouTube, watch documentaries. There's just so many options and an overwhelming number of choices from which you can learn from. Four is social media. This one is one that you kind of have to be careful with because anyone can post anything on social media and it might not be true, but there's a ton of accounts that make it a goal to educate the people and they put out posts and stories and such with all kinds of information. And you can even follow experts of a certain subject if you're interested in them and look at what they post about, look at what they talk about. And I'm sure there's something valuable in the kind of content that they put out in the world. Five is to use educational apps. And this one I think is really important because we're on our phones all the time. Whether you're waiting in line or taking a lunch break, you can just hop on your phone and just for five minutes, go on Duolingo and work on your Spanish. Go check out what's on the news. And of course, the news can be a very triggering place for a lot of people, so that's something that you wanna know your limits, be careful with. There's a lot to be said for having an understanding of what is going on in the world and being aware of current events to a healthy degree. Of course, you can also just go to the education section of the App Store or Google Play or whatever Android users use. You know, see what's out there, check it out, and try out different things and see if you like them. Six is to download software and just play with it. I understand that a lot of softwares are not something you can just kind of click random buttons and see what they do. There's YouTube, tons of tutorials on there. Linda is a great option. They have a lot of different software tutorials. And of course, there's a lot of different resources for different software that you can just simply Google and find all of them. Just make it a fun thing. I am a film major and literally my entire filmmaking career started with me just on a Mac deciding to open iMovie, taking all of my photo booth pictures and dragging them all into 
to my timeline and just adding transitions between all of them. And that was how I taught myself how to use iMovie. I literally made a glorified PowerPoint presentation and then eventually I started filming myself and making stupid music videos, really getting comfortable with it. That experience with iMovie that I had when I was in middle school, it was the foundation of editing in general, but also just the start of my filmmaking endeavor and now it is a huge part of my life. If you're interested in filmmaking like me, iMovie is free with your Mac. If you've always wanted to make beats, there's GarageBand, there's the entire Adobe suite. There's honestly just so much you can play with and you never know when it's gonna come in handy because if you are proficient in a certain software, that's something you can put on your resume and even get certified in depending on the software. Seven is to go to a museum or a historical landmark or a historical building. Physically going somewhere and learning about the place that's around you is a great way to just like get to know your local community or an excuse to take a day trip with your friends. A lot of museums also have one day a month or every few months where there's free admission or reduced admission or if you're a student there's usually like deals associated with that. That's something that you can take advantage of and have an educational experience. Eight is traveling. This is probably the most expensive thing on the list. Taking a trip and really immersing yourself in the culture, if you're trying to learn a language, actually talking to people and getting really comfortable with conversation is something that's truly just unparalleled in terms of educational experiences. If, for example, you're learning about art history, there's such a big difference between looking up photos of the art online and looking at them in your textbook to actually going there and seeing it in real life, which is also why I think study abroad programs are super cool because you can be in a complete completely different country and you can have your classes kind of integrate into where you actually are. So if you're a college student, studying abroad is a great option. That was everything I have for how to learn without school. Let me know if any of these resources worked for you or which one is your favorite and let me know if you have anything to add to this list because I'm sure I have missed something. My name is Grace, thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye!